Mystery radioactive source. Okay, I'll admit it, I know what it is. But do you know what it is? Well, if you do, go ahead and put your guess down in the comments below. And in today's video, let's find out what this is. But first, let's just take some general measurements with some of the detectors that I have here. So the first meter that we're actually gonna to use to measure this radioactive sample is just this Ludlum Model 44-9 pancake detector with a Ludlum Model 14C, which I have over here. So we're gonna go right to times 10. And I'm gonna get as close as I possibly can without touching it to avoid contamination and get as many alpha particles as I possibly can as well. So about 15,000 counts per minute. So our next meter for measuring this radiation will be this Rad IPRD, which is a gamma scintillation detector. It uses an NAITL crystal. Fifteen micro per hour. Seventeen. So our peak count rate was fifty-four counts per second. And last but not least, we'll measure it with the Radi Code One Hundred Two. Now this device uses a gamma scintillator like the Radi PRD, except it is a CSI sensor instead of a NAI sensor. And now for the part you've all been waiting for. Let's run this spectrum. So here we are with the finished spectrum and the results. So the right answer to what we have here, if I can find it, is right there, uranium. So if you look over here, you can see that there is a big, large peak for uranium. So what this object really is, is a material that has a uranium glaze in it. It may not be surprising because this is actually fairly common, but what may be surprising is the color. Most of uranium glazed objects are orange like this one. Very, 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 very rarely do you see a black one like this. And so I did a little bit of research and I was unable to find anything on this. It's super rare. So all I can do is speculate about it based on what I know about this orange uranium glaze. So back in the day, the 1920s, around that time, people started using radium like crazy. It was in watches, toothpaste, medicine, everything. Every single home remedy contained radium at that point, pretty much. And to produce radium, you needed a whole lot of uranium ore. So there was a lot of uranium left over, and so there was no use for it. It was basically considered trash until people really liked this vibrant color. And so they started using it in glazes on pottery and then plates and stuff like that. So I would imagine the same would be the case with this because I mean, it's the same, you know, it's just black, it has a different material that's actually giving it the color inside of it. And you may think that production stopped on these because they were radioactive, but they didn't know that these were radioactive this whole time. What actually stopped them had nothing to do with safety. What actually stopped them was World War II. All this uranium was confiscated for use in the bomb and stuff like that. So this production had to stop. And by the time that that had ended and it was allowed, people wanted to stop using it anyway because it was radioactive. So, so there you have it. That's the full history of uranium glaze. And now you know about one more type of it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe, hit the bell, and share this video with anyone who you think might like it. Also, if you have any questions or suggestions, let me know it in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.